All right, I'm gonna talk on a Smith & Loveless lift station. Had a troubleshoot. If you had an alarm for, actually I got one right now on number two, prime fail. So if you have that, there's a whole slew of things that it could be. Priming system we have on this EV style lift station is the Sonic Start Streamline. So the basic thing is you have a vacuum pump, a little ball check, a needle valve that comes over to your solenoid, your little sight glass bubble, and then you have your little sonic filting, uh, filting, uh, fitting that's basically like a little tuning fork on the inside that senses the water. And then the last part of it is you have your separate little valve over here that you can look at. It's got two different, a needle valve and an actual like quarter inch ball valve. And then that goes up to your vacuum. So if you turn it on and your compressor is working, but you're not drawing any vacuum, the things that you want to check will be starting with here at the vacuum pump. The easiest thing to do right away is to pull this hose, start it, and put your thumb over this and feel if there's vacuum. That's gonna be your first check. So that will confirm everything from here. One of the most obvious problems, obviously, is if something was wrong and this sucked up water, your ball check's gonna be up, keeping water from getting sucked into the pump. You can unscrew this, drain it, clean it. I had a small rag that got stuck in this needle valve and I troubleshot everything I'm about to talk to and it ended up being this stupid little valve had a piece of rag in it that was causing no vacuum between here and there. You're gonna check your tube for any obstructions. The next thing that will happen a lot is your solenoid valve will either get stuck open or it'll get stuck closed depending on how a rag um, that got sucked up is in there or if it had too much corrosion or if it's just worn out. Next thing that might happen is either any of these plumbing fittings came loose, mostly being the one that is like your bulkhead type fitting on the globe, sight glass globe here, or if you have a crack somewhere in this piece of plastic, even if it's a real hairline one that you might not notice, uh, best thing to do is take either some soap or some shaving cream and put it on there and you'll see it start to blow bubbles. Um, making sure that your little clamp piece is properly tightened and it's evenly tightened. Um, as you'll see later, there's also a gasket that goes around the bottom of the globe when it's in place, making sure that that gasket is good. Um, you'll also see later on to making sure that there's no obstruction for there's like a little one inch squared hole for this whole cavity in here from the pump, making sure that's not, um, doesn't have an obstruction in it. Making sure that your actual tuning forks or your, your sonic start system here is working properly. You can generally hear it when the pump is off. And there's also, it's during the day so it's hard to see, but you have a green indicator light that shows that it's getting power. Um, both at your solenoid, you can see this actually is a little bad, I wasn't able to fix it. If these rag up and they vibrate, I've had connections come loose in both this and this. And by connections, I don't mean the little screw, that, which could be your problem, to make sure that the screw didn't back out and that it was losing connection, but actually on the inside of this fitting where the wires terminate and they go into the different terminals, I had a wire that vibrated loose and came out so that this wasn't getting proper power and it was causing it to never sense prime. So you'd actually see water primed all the way up to this point, but it wasn't kicking in because this was never sending the proper signal. Same on here, I had a wire that came loose on the inside of that connection, causing this to never actually open. So basically from here, it was pulling vacuum up. So that's on this part of the vacuum system. 
One thing that you'll want to check moving past that is actually on the pump itself is your gasket that you saw in my other video. If you don't have these tightened down properly and that gasket isn't there, um, you may be losing vacuum just through the connection here. Uh, same up here. This can actually come loose. I don't have the pump apart. There's a mechanical seal inside the motor. If that mechanical seal goes bad, that will cause a vacuum leak. Working around, squeeze myself inside here. What will also cause a vacuum leak is if your check valve isn't closing all the way. If your check valve doesn't close all the way, it's gonna try to pull vacuum on your other side pump too. If that's your case, you can try getting both the pumps to start at the same time so that both vacuum pumps are pulling a prime on both sides to get it pulled down in an emergency. Um, any leaks anywhere inside here, so here, here can cause issues with vacuum. Um, you could have a leak at this fitting down here. We actually had someone when we were in here doing maintenance that kicked this and fractured uh, the nipple uh, by mistake that we didn't notice. And then every time the pump would try to create vacuum, it was basically just sucking air right here and we could never get it to start. Uh, same thing, any obstructions in here, because you may get vacuum and the pump may start, but your actual gauge up there, if the gauge itself isn't bad, may have an obstruction or a leak somewhere in this hose too. So you want to check for that. One last thing I thought of when we got this pump fired back up, as you can see how we have a little bit of leak on the seals of our check valve here. Um, having this leak on the check valves could possibly make you lose vacuum prime too. Though, even though ours is leaking, a lot of times if you had the big vacuum, ho uh, vacuum pumps, it'll overcome a lot of these little leaks. But just wanted to cover all the bases on things to check. Uh, last but not least, if you have no obstructions and right up to this point you're not getting vacuum, uh, obviously check this hose for cracks or leaks or you may have actually burnt out your vacuum pump and Smith & Loveless sells rebuild kits for these. Hard to see, but there's not too big of a channel that goes from the actual inside of the housing into here to uh, sense the prime. And what could happen is if you have an obstruction with some rags in there, and I'm gonna do my best to hold this camera and grab it, but you can see there's rags that will get jammed in that hole. And what it'll cause is you might be able to get a vacuum and it'll take a really long time, but it's gonna take a long time because the rags are holding up the vacuum from actually pulling up the suction shaft into the pump because that little hole is obstructed by rags. What it could also cause is even if it's pulling a vacuum and your forks here, your little, I call them the tuning forks, but it's the sonar sensor, are working properly. Like you can probably hear the ring. Well, not with the MTV going by, but uh, these, the, you'll hear these clearly when you open it up if it still has power to it, kind of ringing. It'll also keep water from making its way in uh, as quick as it should. And water touching these tuning forks is what tells the pump that it's primed. So that's one thing to look for. When you get down to check your little sight glass globe here, you can see that's a pretty hefty crack. Uh, that'll definitely cause a vacuum leak. The pumps may still work, but it may take a really long time for your vacuum pumps to get prime. And then with this particular one, I already got it apart. It was actually leaking. So you can see that there was a buildup underneath the clamp and we had a little bit of sewage residue. I cleaned this off so you could see the crack a little bit more. Uh, that one's pretty obvious. And then over here, same thing. This one's cracked. It wasn't leaking as bad. If you needed to use this in emergency, uh, what we did to actually get these primed and the lift station pumped down is take some electrical tape or something and just wrap it around pretty good. Just enough if you gotta get your uh, sewage pump down in the wet well before. Some of the reasons why these might crack, um, obviously over tightening this fitting will do it. Hitting it 
could possibly do it or torquing it too much when you go to take it out. When you go to pull these out, they get sucked in there with the gasket really well. Uh, what I usually do is I have a little rubber mallet and I'll just really lightly tap it all the way around until you see it start to um, waddle back and forth and then just walk it out. Or the reason why both of these cracked were, were because the pump got ragged up and when it gets ragged up, it shakes really bad. And we had like a cascade of problems is it started vibrating so bad, the check valve sensor wires, that connection came undone on the inside. So this pump thought it was running, kept running, 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 vibrating, 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 so bad that it caused the crack here. And it actually ended up overheating the motor and tripping it out. And that's how we found it. All right, so this is an 11 16 before you put your bulb back on, you want to make sure that your bulkhead type fitting is tight on here. Uh, then when you get the nut, again, you don't want it to be too tight because you don't want to crack the plastic. Get it snug so it isn't like how you'll see later in the video. I went to go hold this nut and tighten the fitting on and it started to spin. So. Alright, this is the fitting off of one of the globes you can see there is actually a little uh, rubber gasket washer that goes in that way that's how I pulled it out <laughs> all right so putting these this is a spare one that we had putting these back on not super hard you just got to make sure you do it right and don't break it because I made the mistake of cracking one um, I already put grease on here I put grease on there to help, like I do with the pump seals up top here, because um, you really should replace your O-ring on these every time. Kind of see on this other one that I took off, you can see how the gasket gets split. This one was not bad on our spare. Um, you want to make sure that that gasket is good, and you also want to make sure there's nothing crazy built up on the ring. It's always going to be dirty. You're dealing with sewage, so there's all kinds of corrosion and stuff in there. But make sure that's clean. I put a little coat of grease that helps this go on good too. Just get it started. You don't really want to bang on it right now. Then get your little clamp that goes on. These are half inch nuts. Get them hand snug. And then as you're tightening it down, you don't want to just tighten one side all the way down at the same time. So once you're at finger tight, five and then I usually go two more so it starts to pull this one down and then just keep going two at a time and once you get it all the way down so now it's it's pretty snug you don't need to crank this thing down really tight um, get it so it's snug and then do a half bolt turn if it'll even go that far. Like this side was already down there pretty good. I'm not putting a whole lot of force on it because if you have something at the bottom seat that's a little bit, if you over tighten it, it'll cause this to wanna to flex, which could cause a crack too. All right, when you're putting your solenoid back on, ideally you'd like to have some Teflon tape. We don't have any out here today. Um, whether you got channel locks, adjustable wrenches, the correct size wrenches or whatever, you always want to make sure you hold um, the base, both when you're removing this or you're putting it back on because you don't want to put any unnecessary torque on the top of the plastic dome. It actually came a little loose on me. You want to get that snug, doesn't need to be super tight. And then you want to make sure you reattach the proper plug into it. When you turn it on, if you have a second person, you can usually feel, if you have your hand on here, to make sure that a few seconds after your vacuum pump kicks in, that the solenoid is clicking. You'll hear it click open. And then as it comes up, you'll be able to see water 
eventually build up in there and you can actually see the two tuning forks. That's what I call tuning forks, but the sonar. Once the water closes those, your pump should turn on and start running. Um, while it's pulling vacuum, you're gonna wanna listen for any vacuum leaks. You can usually hear it hissing, or like I talked about, you can use like a cheap shaving cream or soapy water and see if, you know, sometimes it'll wanna blow out when the pump's running, if it gets primed enough to run, or it'll start sucking the soapy water in to cause bubbles. Or the shaving cream, you'll see the white color of the shaving cream. wasn't able to tell the water but obviously once it kicks in you can see your water in your bubble and then you're gonna see your check valve go up which it is at this point if you had any cracks you might actually see the water bubbling out like I talked about before um, if on your gauge say you did have a leak and your gauge was building vacuum but then you get a trip out saying vacuum failed you can change under your priming mode set. You can have either on-demand prime, which is what we use, which means when the pump calls to turn on, it's gonna prime, or you can keep a constant prime mode. And what that'll do is, say if you have a leak, but it keeps having, it, having an issue uh, timing out, it'll always keep that prime. I cannot get my camera to focus on the screen. Um, you can set your prime failure. We have ours set to eight minutes because we constantly have issues with our check valves getting ragged up and whatnot. So I didn't want to max it out at the 12 minutes, but we had to turn it up quite a bit to make up for the time. Cause especially if it completely loses its prime, like it did, it can take like four, five, six minutes, depending on what your wet well level is at to pull a prime. Whereas from the factory, they set it pretty low because on a brand new system, it'll prime up real quick. Like it, it'll take like a minute and it'll pull prime. So you may just need to turn that up. 